Hello friends, this is Dr. Nirmal Yadav Chaudhary. I am a senior consultant in medicine and critical care at Woodlands Hospital in Calcutta, India. Uh, I would like to discuss a few things about the coronavirus epidemic that is going on right now. It's an epidemic that is going on in multiple locations all across the globe. That's why it's called a pandemic. Uh, there are some serious questions about this virus. This is the most contagious disease that human beings have come across. Uh, in my opinion, at least uh, the most contagious disease that I have seen in my quite prolonged medical career. I would also like to point that this is a virus uh, which is not only very contagious but also uh, it's quite deadly in a lot of patients. About 80% patients uh, have mild symptoms uh, and uh, about 15% patients uh, have illness to the extent that needs hospitalization and about 5% people get seriously sick uh, requiring critical care treatment. But uh, a lot of these people who end up being in the ICU, especially end up being on a ventilator, uh, they die. So this uh, illness, it's very difficult to say who is going to get very sick and who not. And there are some suggestions that the illness is more severe in case of patients uh, with uh, heart disease, diabetes, and other medical conditions. It's not entirely true, uh, but there is some suggestion that there may be uh, some higher morbidity and mortality for diabetics, hypertensives, patients with renal failure, and patients with heart disease. But there are a lot of patients who have died, who didn't have any comorbidity, very young and healthy, uh, normal adults, all of a sudden they die from this disease. So we cannot be entirely, uh, you know, trusting the fact that uh, this disease is essentially a disease of old people. At least uh, mortality is higher only in sick people. That is not entirely true. What is very, very important, in my opinion, is to look at this peculiarity of the virus that it spreads very easily, doesn't cause symptoms in a lot of people, but it can spread to others, even from those people who don't have any symptoms. So you are talking about a perfect biological weapon. Just imagine if you have a virus that is so deadly that it kills everyone that it comes in touch with, just like say Ebola. It's very deadly. Because it's so deadly, it cannot spread very well because uh, it will kill the host right away. And Ebola you cannot get that easily unless you come in direct contact with secretions of the patient. So look at the coronavirus. This is an airborne virus. This is a respiratory virus. This is a virus that can spread very easily from coughing, sneezing, even from talking and doesn't cause symptoms in vast majority of patients having the infection. It is a perfect bio weapon to spread among millions of people within a short period of time. I'm not saying that this is a bioweapon developed by China with some, you know, very ulterior motive and also, you know, the nefarious motive of controlling global economy. There are a lot of suggestions like that, but 
there is no good proof as of now to say this is something that was cooked up in a lab and not really a natural virus. But there are some evidences that seriously raise questions. Because the behavior of the virus is very, very unusual. We haven't seen anything this contagious ever. And also, we have to remember, when China started having these cases, from October 2019, they didn't share data with the rest of the world. They didn't ask for help from others. Even WHO was convinced to tell the rest of the world that this is a viral pneumonia, but it is not very infectious. It does not travel from one human being to another. Most likely someone caught it from a bat. But human to human transmission isn't that prominent. I don't even know how someone can say that in the right state of mind. How are you getting thousands of patients every day if you are not having human to human transmission? So that is a blatant lie. And this is a blatant lie that WHO said and the lie must have been you know, supplied by the Chinese government. So these are very big red flags that we have to notice. This does not mean that this is not a natural virus, does not mean that this is a virus that Chinese bioweapon lab uh, developed. I'm not saying any of that. But regarding the entire evolution of this virus, starting from October 2019 till date, there are a lot of very big red flags that raise questions to anyone with a critical bent of mind. Regarding the virus, we need to remember one very clear concept. If a virus is this contagious, there is no other option but a vaccine. The vaccine is not available right now, may not be available in very near future. Until we don't have the vaccine, we have to practically continue lockdown, uh, which is not really possible, but try to, try to mend your ways, try to uh, practice uh, wearing masks and as much protection as possible till everyone gets vaccinated. Everyone in your community, everyone in your country. Because unless you have a ready vaccine, effective vaccine available, there is no way to stop spreading this virus. Now, when it comes to the question of vaccines, we need to understand this is a very big, humongous task. Because this is a vaccination program that has to be global. So you are talking about almost 8 billion people to be vaccinated. So we need to make a new vaccine that has to be effective, should not have a lot of side effects. And then we have to manufacture 8 billion dosage. It's not easy. Not even close to easy. So this is, this is one very important thing that people need to keep in mind that in a modern world, wars are not going to be fought with guns. Wars are going to be fought with germs, maybe with computer viruses. But it will be either a biovirus or a computer virus. That is your new weapon. So every major country has to be prepared to deal with viral attacks, biovirus or computer virus. We need to have very robust infrastructure of 
dealing with these two kinds of threats from now on deep into future because this is the warfare of the modern age if any major country thinks that someone else will develop the vaccine and give me a billion doses that's living in fool's paradise united states is not going to develop vaccine and not give it to their own 350 million population and give it to india france is not going to develop a vaccine and uh, you know cater to the rest of the world before giving it to their own people that's not going to happen so major countries like india need to develop their own vaccines as soon as possible not only for coronavirus but even in future we need to be prepared with all necessary infrastructures to develop an effective vaccine for any other kind of virus if this was a bioweapon if coronavirus was truly developed by china suppose how do you know the next year there won't be something else or five years later there could be something even more deadly so it is it is a high time that we we have robust infrastructure just like a part of defense infrastructure we need to have that ready ready to go on a on an hours notice to develop necessary vaccines whatever be the bioweapon threat in future may be in the same way if there is any computer virus threat we need to have a robust infrastructure to jump on to work in an hours notice just like the military we have a massive defense budget we have a massive defense defense infrastructure that doesn't mean we go to war every day in the same way we need to have a massive infrastructure to deal with a bio virus that may be launched as a weapon or a computer virus that also can be launched as a weapon please think about it